Hello and welcome to uh, another edition of On The Whistle after another very disappointing afternoon watching Sunderland unfortunately. James is away at Harry Potter World and I think me and Nick were both hoping you know that maybe next weekend we can go to Harry Potter World instead of watching Sunderland maybe that yeah, would be... we probably made the wrong choice today. That would be nice. Um, we should have swapped. Very disappointing performance. Before we get into a few questions Nick, what did what did you make of it? The, the, the feet, main thing fans are saying was that if very strange it felt like almost the handbrake was on, you know, sticking with the back five, didn't really create a huge a huge amount. It was quite a tough watch and at this stage of the season it was quite hard to understand really. We've yeah. just, we just spoke to Mike Dodds there and he basically explained that, you know, if you look at what Millwall have done under Neil Harris, they're so good on the transition set pieces and that was obviously in the back of his mind that he didn't want to give them the space, he didn't want to overcommit. But I do feel like the way the season's gone, you have to try and give the support or something. It was all very... Um, pedestrian today and I think they could have been a bit bolder what, what did you think? I, well I agree with you about being bolder and I think the narrative from Mike Dodds over the last few weeks is we want to go out and win these last games of the season um, he's talked about possession talked about sorting out the defence and keeping clean sheets which on the whole they, they've done apart from the Blackburn game so today was a bit of a, a bit puzzling because I, I, I was a bit surprised to find Dak yeah. playing in that sort of false nine role when you've got I mean, OK, he might not be flavour of the month at the moment, him here on the bench, but he is big. He, he can, you know, if they put him in a, a pivotal position up front and use him as a target man. I thought this was a sort of game which was probably the ideal opportunity to do that. And then, you know, to encapsulate the game as a whole, what Mike Dodd said afterwards was he thought the game was, was boring and, yeah. and both sides were boring and, and they were I mean it was a boring game to watch but it, 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 that made sense from a Millwall perspective because realistically a point would have been a good result they, they, for them away they, from they, home they, they've got a, so, I mean look at the way they all came yeah. together in a um, huddle at the end of the game and yeah. you can see exactly what Neil Harris is doing in terms of building the mentality again at, at, at the den he's trying to build that um, sense of Millwall being a team that nobody likes to play against yeah. nobody likes them and, and they don't care you know that's their mantra isn't it and you could see that when they went one up you know they're more than happy to break the game up go down and so on and so on and just slow it down and i think there's an, there's an onus on you playing at home here to try and take the game yeah. to to the opposition and it was a sideways all the time nobody nobody was really brave enough to gamble on throwing themselves in the box and putting balls in the box and the set pieces were poor as well. The corners, they didn't really um, negotiate those well, I didn't think. So a very, very strange game, very lackadaisical, flat, end of season, classic end of season game, if you like. Loads of people asking about the DAC selection. I suppose there's two elements that we asked Mike Dodds about it, and he basically said, you've got two big physical centre-halves. Rather than give them what they want, which is someone to battle with, someone to fight with, put in a more technical player, drop them deep, link up the play. He obviously admitted it didn't work, that's why he changed it half-time. But what do you make of the broader point from a lot of fans that, listen, Dak's probably not going to be here next year. D don't play him, give him here a chance. Give, you know, give, um, I know he's not fit at the moment, but when he's fit again, Roosan a chance. You know, maybe get Tommy Watson into the squad. What, what, what do you make of that argument? Um, I think it's I, fair I, enough, I, don't I, you? I think at this that's point, fair enough. Like, that's something I had talked to Benno about um, at the start of the second half when, when Dak had, had gone off. I, I'm, I was surprised that Tommy Watson wasn't on the bench because it's been talked about and he's doing well for the under-21s. He did train apparently in the warm-up with the first team, so I don't know if that's a bit of a nod that, that that's going to change in the next wonder, couple of weeks. I but, um, but we'll I, you know, these are the games, the opportunity. I, do, I think they're missing a trick in terms of giving some of the younger players an opportunity, giving a few players opportunities they wouldn't have got normally in the normal run of events if they'd been pushing for a playoff spot. Um, this is ideal, you know, you know they, they, they've nothing to lose by it. Yeah. Um, it, and it's ironic when you go back to Watford I remember a game when Sam Allardyce was in charge it was the last game of the season and he blooded a couple of youngsters in that game because they weren't going down they yeah, weren't going yeah. up um, in the Premier League and, and so it was an opportunity and I think that is an opportunity missed and maybe at the moment um, Mike Dodds is too focused on his record his what it's going to say at the end of the season Mike Dodds lost X number of games yeah. or drew X number of games rather than strangely he talks about this being a huge club and a bigger club maybe he's taking the eye off the ball a little bit in that respect and should be saying right look for the for the for the betterment of this club these are the young players should be getting the opportunity yeah. in these these sort of games where we've got nothing to lose but everything to gain from these players getting that sort of experience 
go into a couple of questions before I let Nick go and enjoy Saturday evening. Someone's asked where Patrick Roberts was. Patrick Roberts has had a son this morning. Son, so yeah, congratulations yeah. To, to the Roberts. That's why he wasn't involved. He obviously would have been involved. Trey Hume had some illness yesterday, which then improved, which he didn't expect, which is why he was on the bench because Dodds didn't want to make a last minute reshuffle and Dan has got an angle injury. So that kind of clears yeah. all that off. Um, yeah, just a couple of questions. Adam says, how much of the blame should Dodds accept for today's performance? Listen, I think it's a bit of both. I think that the setup I thought was too conservative today and I mm -hmm. thought it was probably too slow to change it. I thought, you know, they should have gone at Millwall more. They definitely should have got more players in the final third. I thought Baron she looked right when they came on. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there's a reason why Sunderland struggled to score goals, right? And the DAC thing was symptomatic of that today. The, the answers just aren't there and that's obviously not on him. That's on the that's on the recruitment and the sporting director, isn't it? Yeah, and I think I, I, it's an element of blame on both sides. I think yeah. there, there is the issue as coaches will often tell you, I mean, it doesn't matter how experienced, they say once the players are out on the pitch, it's sometimes difficult to get instructions to them. That they, that, and there is um, an onus on the players themselves to, to take decisions. And maybe they should have been a bit bolder. I've just spoken to Callum Styles. He sort of hinted that we perhaps should have been a bit bolder. We should have been a bit quicker in the passing. We should have been trying a bit harder to um, up the pace, if you like, uh, because we knew what Noel yeah. were going to do. So. I think that you know both are culpable. Yeah, um, I think that is and, and, that, that is slightly personal, though, isn't it? Because bar and Alshish, they make mistakes, but they do yeah. try things. They do, do you know what do, I mean? So they the, do, a slightly I, conservative yeah. selection did lend itself to a slightly conservative yeah. performance. And I, I, I yeah, and, 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 you know, you have to say Mike Dodds did change it towards the end to try and get a couple of players on who do do like to take players on, do like to get in the box where possible. But it, I mean, I, you know, I again come back to, to the way Millwall set up. They get everybody behind the ball. They are dogged. They are a difficult side to play against and came with a very definite plan not to lose the game. And the bonus was they got the goal. They got the first goal and that's another issue yeah. with Sunderland. If they don't get the first goal, they struggle. They were almost too scared of conceding the first goal, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, and, and, and in the end, that. almost forgot to try it's and get to the, the first I think goal. it's getting yeah. into the heads a little bit now. Yeah. We've got to get the first yeah, goal. Yeah. And when they don't, they start to they almost, a bit. They almost don't get the game into enough. themselves, yeah. yeah. Last question from Andy says, what's the point at this stage? I oh, know, it's a good question. <laughs> Have you got an answer for that, Nick? I don't. Not really, I haven't, no. We'll end it on that note then. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for sending your questions in. And we will be back next week, either from Harry Potter World or Vicarage Road. Who knows? We'll wait and see. Harry Potter, sorry. <laughs>